Hello there, and thank you for joining me for another day of 100 Days of Kubernetes. For those who are new to my channel, my name is Anais, and this is the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days. Now, in the previous videos, I really looked at different tutorials, different examples, and one-off videos. Each video is really self-contained. This will change in the next videos, and I will elaborate on that at the end of this video. In this video, however, we're going to take a look at different deployment strategies. If you're using Kubernetes, and I hope you are at least interested about learning about it, if you're watching this video, you can utilize really amazing deployment strategies. You can utilize applications service mesh, such as Linkerd, for advanced deployments, whereby you can shift gradually the traffic from one application, one revision of your application, to the next. If everything looks good, the traffic will incrementally shift. If something goes wrong, you can automatically revert to the previous revision. We will take a look at this deployment strategy, as well as others, right now. OK, so today we're just going to stay on our drawing board. When we talk about deployments, what outcome do we want to achieve, ideally? Well, we want to oops, make our entire deployment process, everything that's happening, observable. We want to know exactly what's happening where at any point in time. We want to rate as little YAML as possible. OK, so we want to reduce the number of YAML we have to write for our deployments to take place. Ideally, we want to define everything within Git. So we can use GitOps and define all of our resources declaratively. Then we want to automate everything. Thing. So, because only if we automate everything, we can really be ensured, or more ensured, that our deployment is taking place how it's supposed to. If something goes wrong, the machine will know, will revert, will make everything good again, or tell us about it to be able to fix it. So we want to automate as much as possible. And lastly, we want to deploy often. OK, only if we deploy often, we can really respond to external factors as fast, as quickly and as flexible and agile as possible. So all of this is our ideal scenario, right? Ideally, no vendor lock in or dependency on any tools that we can't get out of and stuff like that. Now, what are the deployment strategies we're going to be looking at? First of all, Big Bang. Big Bang deployments. Second, rolling updates rolling updates then we're going to take a look at blue green blue green deployments then we're going to shift to look at a b testing testing we're going to look at canary deployments canary deployments deployments and lastly we're going to take a quick look at progressive delivery Delivery. Okay, so let's get started. So what is Big Bang? Big Bang. As the name says, it's everything going boof, right? Now you don't want your infrastructure to explode. That's not the ideal case, right? If you have here your old infrastructure, old, and you want to shift to your new, right? So what you do is you just cancel this out. Maybe those both run on the same infrastructure. Yeah, and then you just deploy the new one that goes on your infrastructure. This goes out and the new one goes in. Now, the problem is with a Big Bang deployment that you have downtime, likely, really likely. Maybe just a few seconds. Like, for example, when I used to deploy my new website updates, I would literally delete all of the resources that were there and just put in my new resources of the update. Now that's a horrible way of doing it. I stopped doing that. Don't do it. So you have downtime. You can't revert. Cannot revert. Okay. So if you find something going wrong in your new deployment, you cannot revert easily back to your initial deployment. And that's bad because it doesn't give you flexibility. It doesn't allow you to respond to errors quickly it, you are required to test your new deployment extensively in your staging environment or wherever that is to make sure nothing goes wrong once you deploy it right because that's going to be really costly 
So you would use this deployment probably if in a really large scale intertwined nasty monolithic architecture or in really simple deployments such as my website, right? Where people don't really care if it's down. People don't really care if something is broken, I hope, and things like that, right? So these are the kind of scenarios where you would want to use something like Big Bang. Now, the, the benefit is, the main benefit is, is that it's super simple to use. So let's look at rolling updates. Updates, okay. So let's assume for the sake of it, we have six different nodes, okay? These are different nodes, they run either different instances of our infrastructure, different types of different services or multiple services, like replications of one service, for instance. So what we do with rolling updates is we replace the first node with our new deployment. New, this is old, they are all old. And then once we see that this one is going really well, yep, we want to spin up the next one. This is the new one and we cancel out the other one. And through doing that, we continuously cancel out our existing ones and put in place our new deployment, right? Now, as you can see, they are both going to be running side by side. We're going to be running these ones, the new ones and the old ones side by side. So they have to be compatible with each other. We will have to be able to shift the traffic, shift traffic from one deployment to the next and so on. Now, I lost my drawing. Now, <laughs> why would we want to do that? Well, we can gradually roll out our deployments, which makes it a lot easier. The problem is that we're really replacing a lot of the infrastructure in some cases, right? And they have to be compatible with each other and it, configuration in this scenario might be difficult and so on. So, but it gives us higher flexibility, right? because not all the users will be affected all at once, because ideally some of the traffic will go to the old one and some of it will go to the new one. And through that, at some point, you will have all of the new ones being deployed and the old ones just out. New, new, new. And then the new ones become the old ones and then you can go again, right? So this is a gradual rollout from one to the next. That's basically it. Let's look at blue-green deployments blue green now in many cases in blue green deployments you literally have identical infrastructures okay now these are not the same size but let's assume they are identical okay i'm just really bad at drawing and you have some nodes or some parts of your infrastructure running here and then you have well then this is your blue deployment and this is your green deployment. Now right now everything runs to the blue deployment. This is everything that your application currently runs. You're running these two infrastructures in parallel, okay? Now with green deployment, what do you do then? You spin up, oops, you spin up your new resource and you cancel out one of them, right? And then you do the next thing and you cancel out one of them. And then you spin up one more and you cancel out one of them. Spin up one more and you cancel out one of them. This is really, it's just like shifting it from one infrastructure to the next. Now, in this case, it's less coupled than with rolling updates because you really have identical environments, identical scenarios. The problem is it requires lots of resources. And most people don't have that many resources. Most people can only have one cluster, not two identical clusters where they then shift from one to the next, right? Now, again, with blue-green deployments, you have higher confidence in what's actually happening. So you're really able to make more informed decisions of what's going on. Now, once your new update has been successfully rolled out, this will then become your blue deployments and it will start again. And then you can spin up the new resources on your other infrastructure and so on. And that's really blue-green deployments. It's just this pendulum shifting traffic. Now let's get to the fun stuff. What is A-B testing or A-B deployments? Let's assume you have here your application, right? Running in some infrastructure, your application. This is your application that maybe you have several replicas of or not. And you have different features within this application. Yeah, these are different components, different features. And you want to add a feature, right? You're adding here this new feature, yeah? 
and then you don't want everybody to just access it. You want to get specific feedback from a, sub from a subset of users. You want to A-B test your new feature. You want to make sure it's working correctly. You want to make sure there are no bugs or you want to be able to discover the bugs and fix them and get information on how to improve it from a subset of users. Now, A-B testing goes hand in hand with feature flags. We will get to that in a second. So with A-B testing, it's not really a rollout strategy. It's more of a, how can I test in production with a subset of user strategy, right? So you can direct some of the traffic ultimately to them, to the new feature. And then you have a traffic of all the other users that you don't care as much about to the existing features. So you only make this feature available to really a subset of users. Now here goes my favorite, what are canary deployments? Canary deployments are really named after the canary bird. Now when people used to go to mines, mine coal and diamonds and other stuff, I don't know what you mine, luckily you don't have to do it, <laughs> they take a bird with them, a canary bird, and the bird would sing, and if the bird stops singing, maybe drops dead, that's when the toxicity levels in the mine get too high and the workers better get out, right? So it's this kind of testing, insurance thing. The example that, let's test it out. If something goes back, let's revert. But if it goes good, we can stay and we can keep doing it. Keep doing what we're doing. So with canary deployments, you have here your infrastructure let's say, and then you have all of your traffic going to your existing application, 100% of your traffic going in there. And then you make a change either to a feature or to the entire application, to your entire service, whatever it's running, right? And then you want to shift the traffic instead of having 100% there, you first maybe have 90% going there. And then you have 10% going to the new one. You can use different strategies here. You can either allow only a subset of users with specific characteristics to access your new deployments, or you can allow everybody to shift randomly between those two. It's really, it depends on your use case, on your needs, on how you want to test it. And this allows you to see whether or not your new deployment is accurate and you want to shift more of the traffic to this deployment. So you can then upscale to 20% and this one downscales to 80%, right? And by doing that, you gradually shift the traffic and it allows you to see within your metrics, within your observability stack, what's actually going on and to respond to what's going on. Now, canary deployments and A-B testing can be combined with feature flags. And this is part of progressive delivery, where we basically we label our new deployment, our new features, and then we can either allow a subset of users to access them. And by having feature flags, we can easily revert from our new deployment. Like let's say something goes wrong, right? And by 20 or 30% of the traffic going to our new deployment, we see, oh, there's a lot of latency. or Oh, the error is getting really high, right? That's when we want to revert and we want to spin, spin this down and get the traffic back to the original one up to 100%, right? We can do that. And we can do that really easily with progressive delivery. Progressive delivery allows us to be really agile, flexible, continuously deploy new updates, test and production, and so on. So anybody should be able to, like in the end, when everything is automated, when we have feature flex, when we have high confidence in our observability stack and everything that's set up, anybody should be able to deploy to production at any time, pretty much. Now, the previous videos have really been one-off content, topics around different tools, technologies, different things, tutorials that you can do. The next 10 videos will focus on a specific project that I will do from beginning to finish. With everything that's needed to set it up, each video, 5 to 10 minutes. Stay tuned for that. Now, I hope this was useful. If it was, please do remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. You also want to join our community at community.100daysofkubernetes.io. I hope to see you there and in one of my next videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.